sure. Uh, I'm sure Perrin uh, uh, very much appreciated your support and you made it very you made it possible for us to have all this success. So thank you so much for your participation and your contribution. So I think we have colleagues from all around the world and I'd like to greet them. It's I think it's very early morning in Taipei, our gracious host for this year's conference and uh, close to midday for our partners from uh, New Zealand uh, and uh, afternoon for most uh, of North America and Toronto and late evening for our friends in Delft and Milano who organized the two last editions of uh, Open Education Global. So I remember fondly my short participation last year in Milano when I had to leave quickly to Berlin. And, uh, and I would also like to say that I would have loved to come to Taipei, mm -hmm. meet, meet our colleagues, and also admire the magnificent Chinese works of art in the National Palace Museum. It uh, uh, always brings great memory. So I would like to introduce this session, especially my two colleagues, Olivier Amerlet, who is the president of the French Digital University and former vice president of university in Toulouse, and Michael Matlos, president of the Digital University for Science and Technology, and also former president of the French National Research Agency. Olivier. Okay, Olivier. thank you. I'm going to present the landscape of thematic digital universities in France, which results from the creation of the association L'Université Numérique three years ago. L'Université Numérique means the digital university, and I will focus in particular on the current situation of the French digital universities. Uh, next slide, thank you. Six uh, thematic digital universities are grouped together in l'université numérique. As you can see on this slide, each thematic digital university has its name, its logo, and each is dedicated to a specific disciplinary field, economy and management, health and sport, science and engineering, humanities, ecology and sustainable development, and finally technology. Even if this diversity suggests uh, great wealth, particularly in terms of contents, but also practices, this has not helped over the years to make our offer clearly identifiable in the French university landscape. Now I will quickly explain to you how we arrived at the current situation, starting from the beginning of digital education in France at the end of the 20th century, to develop a nationwide digital higher education at the end of the 90s in France. A call for projects was published in order to set up French digital campuses between 2000 and 2002. These digital campuses aimed at bringing together universities in order to develop educational resources. Then between 2004 and 2010, the thematic digital universities were gradually created, mainly from these digital campuses. The thematic digital universities were founded with the basic principle of pooling and developing open educational resources by, by large consortia of universities. And finally, in 2017, in order to simplify the landscape of digital universities and promote cooperation between them, the association L'Université Numérique was founded. Indeed, in 2016, a report from IGAENR was published. IGAENR is an independent authority responsible in particular for evaluating public higher education policies in France and providing guidance. This report highlighted the strategic importance of thematic digital universities, as well as the quality of their productions. It also proposed a number of recommendations for the Ministry of Higher Education and Research, for the thematic digital universities, and for the universities themselves. The Ministry's policy on digital education was deemed unclear and funding very insufficient. 
the thematic digital university landscape was considered difficult to understand and ultimately rather poorly known by governances of higher education institutions, teacher, teachers and students. And finally, universities were recommended to rely more on thematic digital universities in order to promote mutual initiatives rather than single in institution-wide uh, productions. Since its creation three years ago, l'Université Numérique has gradually become an important operator of the policy of the Ministry of Higher Education and Research. We are bound by an agreement on objectives and resources. The funding allocated to us by the French state should enable us to align our catalog of open educational resources with the curricula of national diplomas. And we are also mandated to represent the French state in international institutions related to digital pedagogy in higher education. We combine our disciplinary expertise with uh, transversal actions. We are working in disciplinary and thematic communities with uh, specific needs, but also for global goals, such as the development of, of transversal competences. And finally, the creation of l'Université Numérique has enabled us to improve our recognition and our reputation by successfully participating in numerous calls for our project, by gaining visibility with higher education institutions, as well as by affirming our international outreach. I'm now going to present some of our recent initiatives. We are working to develop resources that make it easier for young people to make the transition from secondary to higher education. And to do this, we are developing positioning tests and training quizzes. We select open educational resources that we align with the contents of bachelor courses in order to facilitate the hybridization of our courses, of courses by, uh, by teachers. This is, of course, particularly important since the COVID pandemic and the more or less strict lockdown periods that we have been experiencing since the beginning of this year. We provide tools to help students acquire transversal and soft skills. For example, we have a large scale project called Ecri Plus, which helps to strengthen French writing skills for students of all disciplines. We fund and participate in projects that aim at setting up proof of concepts to facilitate the sharing and use of open educational resources, such as works around uh, learning analytics, for example, uh, around the semantic web, indexing tools, uh, resource repositories, uh, etc. And uh, finally, we are actively working to support people in difficulty and to strengthen our links with the French speaking world, a large part of which is located in disadvantaged uh, geographical areas. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olivier. So I'll pass the floor on to Michael, who will describe what we do with open educational resources in French higher education. Michael. Your microphone is mute, Michael. Okay. Yeah, so thank you, Jacques, and uh, thank you, Olivier. Uh, I, what I'd like to do is to take advantage of the few minutes that I have to, uh, sh to tell the audience here, all of you who are online listening to us, how much uh, it's important to us to use the mechanism of the Federation of the Université Numérique as a digital university nationally in France to improve our positioning uh, internationally. And so uh, just to give you an idea of the kinds of things that we've been doing as uh, digital universities on a national level in France, uh, we see here that we've been supplying, and this has been going on now for almost 20 years, uh, resources, uh, electronic uh, resources, educational resources uh, as digital material to help uh, people to learn, to help teachers to teach, uh, to prepare for exams and other things. 
these um, uh, resources are also complemented by video presentations that allow people to have small nuggets of uh, um, training in specific areas in uh, short videos. And we also are contributing through our educational resources to larger scale programs in terms of uh, MOOCs. And you see here on the screen, a few examples of the, uh, of the offer related to MOOCs that's uh, currently uh, being uh, done by the members of the uh, Université Numérique Federation in, uh, in France. We're collaborating when we do that with, uh, with universities. And uh, just uh, to give you an idea of the kind of thing that we can do, we have here an example of a, a program called SONAT, which is a joint initiative with the uh, digital, national digital universities and 10 degree granting universities who have agreed to collaborate on putting in place a platform to uh, allow students who have dropped out from formal education and secondary education and therefore are not eligible to enter into higher education to be able to prepare fully online a degree program allowing them to enter into university education. Uh, one of the important features of this is that it is open not only to students that are located geographically near campuses but also those who have difficulty with access to campuses those who are far away from places where they have easy access to higher education campuses, such as people living in the mountains, uh, far away from uh, major metropolitan centers. And one particular feature that's uh, very interesting, although it's not a majority of the students preparing for the program through the SONAT platform, we also offer the opportunity for a limited number of persons who are currently in prison and therefore clearly not able to have the geographical mobility that you would like to go onto a campus to be able to prepare to enter into a university program. Uh, the uh, program is uh, easily accessible through a national portal. Uh, it has content that is approved by a scientific committee, uh, pedagogically validated by experts in each field for the different uh, parts of the program. Uh, we're indexing it with the, uh, with the French norm uh, for a learning object a metadata uh, for higher education. This is the SOUP, L-O-M-F-R norm. Uh, we hope to be able to migrate soon with all of what we're doing with the uh, na uh, university into the uh, MLR uh, uh, norms uh, internationally. And the harvesting of the metadata around all of the content uh, is done through the Open Archives Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvesting. Uh, this is important for us as digital universities nationally in France to make sure that we're well positioned in the international landscape. Uh, we are currently working on deploying the platform in other areas and in particular uh, there is a current ongoing deployment in the Republic of Congo uh, and other French-speaking countries in Africa and we are looking at future developments with the Université Numérique and the uh, Federation of Digital National Universities on a national Moodle-based platform and national uh, platforms that can be networked to help all universities in France to move into the digital age. Thank you, Jacques. Thank you very much, Michael. So I'll give you a few words about the work we've been doing on the UNESCO OER recommendations. So we've been working for the last two years with uh, ICDE, Open Education Consortium at the time. We made the Open Education Leadership Summit in Paris in December 2018. And we've made a few steps uh, by, especially in March this year, at the time when we should have been participating in the UNESCO Mobile Learning Week, which was postponed, but was, and also at the time when the dynamic coalition was moved from face to face to uh, the virtual world. So in this past July, we joined the OER Dynamic Coalition, and we are grateful for UNESCO and ICD and all our international partners. Uh, for their collaboration. I'd like to introduce the survey which is done by the ICOER Advocacy Committee. And there are a number of persons who will be participating or also participating today and tomorrow in the OEG 2020. So what is interesting is the country distribution of these uh, of the respondents, where it's obvious that what the work we do with French speaking countries in Africa complements the coverage of the country distribution of this survey. 
So we have members from the, the, the academic world, from the ministries, virtual universities, UNESCO, and we are also looking at extending these current members to additional partner countries. So we'll be doing some activities in capacity building, especially capacity building material. We are going on the French cultural approach and replicability. Uh, working for a multi-sectoral dialogue between the corporate world, the academic world, and the uh, civil servants in the ministries. And we are doing that in parallel with uh, other regional initiatives by UNESCO and ICDE. I would like to mention especially the e-learning Co Africa conference. So the results of the survey are quite uh, indicative at this stage. It's too early to have uh, uh, specific results. But COVID-19 has had a big impact, is a catalyst, and is changing very much the work in uh, the way the educational institutions are working. So we are adapting a, a course, a certification co course on OER, copyright, and open licensing, which is done by o OER Universitas in New Zealand. And we are currently doing the work of translating, adapting, and uh, adapting to the cultural context, moving from common law to Roman law. We are doing also additional work with a preliminary survey by UNESCO and Neil Butcher and Associates in cooperation with OER Africa. And we, after this survey, we will we'll leverage our existing networks within higher education ministries, as well as all ministries in our partner countries, including all ministries that have an impact on professional training be it arts and crafts, fisheries, or other ministries. We hope to organize three virtual transnational workshops. Why transnational? Because it's difficult to have only a national uh, workshop with a, given the strong relationship between a virtual university in an African country and its ministry. And we also, hopefully, we can dream and hope, have a face-to-face -face meeting in 2021 possibly co-located with e-learning Africa conference so that we can co-focus on both the OER recommendation and how also we can mix OERs with digital micro-credentials for lifelong learning. So we would like to extend that by learning from work which is done in English speaking world. We would like to share that with other Francophone countries and we would also like to develop a cooperation with other linguistic areas, especially Port Portuguese speaking countries, Portugal, Brazil. And we have also to address the needs uh, re requests we have from Angola and Mozambique, for instance. So I would like to conclude this presentation by giving, uh, giving you, uh, advising you to join us tomorrow for the workshop organized by Creative Commons and OEG and also a few weeks later with a workshop we're doing at Online Educa in Berlin, which will also be virtual, where we'll be discussing the work in more detail about what we're doing with OER uh, UNESCO recommendation. Thank you very much, everyone. And if you want to contact us for the work, you have the generic contact and the two names of the two persons who are working very much with UNESCO currently. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Wow, thanks so much, Jacques. Uh, this is really impressive work. I love initiatives that enable collaboration across institutions. I think that's the way of the future. Less autonomous independent institutions and more collaboration between them. So you've, you've outlined a very impressive set of initiatives that can be a model, I think, for how others could also pursue that strategy. Uh, special thanks to you and to Olivier and to Michael for sharing with us that work. And I look forward to collaborating with all of you um, on advancing that work in both the Francophone parts of the world and also in other parts of the world, including Spanish speaking parts of the world. Uh, we currently have a regional node in Latin America that I think could be, be involved. Um, and lastly, I really uh, want to say that we uh, in addition to participating in the dynamic coalition that UNESCO has formed, we've also created this kind of what we call a network of open orgs that are working together to try to provide products and services in support of governments who are pursuing the implementation of the UNESCO recommendation and think there may be a possible 
way for us to connect and that work too. It's always a pleasure to see you. Uh, thank you all for this presentation. And, and with that, Liz, perhaps we can stop the recording. Thank you.